How's it going everyone? Well, 2021 is coming to an end and in this video, I want to give you guys a recap of 2021 PlayStation Plus Year in Review. The game offerings, quote unquote, free games. Um, you guys know the deal. Now, 2021 was interesting because this was the year, the real first full year that if you had a PlayStation 5, your perception of how PlayStation Plus treated you is going to be far different than if you just had a PlayStation 4. Now, since the beginning of the year, I had been saying over and over again, if you don't have your PlayStation 5 yet, make sure you go on the website, make sure you log in, I think the PlayStation app, you can do it, and make sure you add the PlayStation 5 offerings to your library, so when you get a PS5, hopefully in 2022, you'll have those games ready for you to go, but let's give you guys an overall recap, and let's start things off with January, we'll go from January to December, we did this before, I think, in the mid-year point, or like back in August or September, We'll give every month a thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs in the middle, and I'll uh, go from there. All right, January 2021, Man Eater was the PlayStation 5 offering only on PS5. Then you had Greedfall, a pretty underrated RPG there by Spiders, and then Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Should be noted, Greedfall, the plus copy, I believe was not eligible for the PlayStation 5 upgrade. That's something that a lot of studios have been doing when they offer games. FF7 Remake, though, just got the up upgrade uh, added on for plus subscribers. Would have to say that this is a thumbs up. Maneater was a pretty solid offering, a little quirky game. Greedfall, I think, is super underrated. And SOTR, I had my issues with the game's DLC program and uh, how much DLC they were pumping out. But the game itself is pretty good, even though I think it's uh, probably the... Probably weaker than Rise of the Tomb Raider. I think Rise of the Tomb Raider is by far the best, but nevertheless, there you go with that, January. Moving on from that, February was another banger with Destruction All-Stars, a game that was initially supposed to be a PlayStation 5 launch title at 70 bucks. Well, and then it became a plus title in February, and then it was released for 20 bucks, but there you go. Control Ultimate Edition on PS5 and PS4. Great offering there, in my opinion, that is Remedy's best game thus far. Love me some Control, the Ultimate Edition has the DLC as well. And then on PS4, you also got Concrete Genie, which was a nice offering. A bit of an underrated exclusive there. It was a budget exclusive released at like $30 or $40? I want to say $30. But a good game that a lot of people did miss out on. I'm going to give that a thumbs up as well. March, arguably the best month of the year and has aged very well. You got Maquette on PlayStation 5. Final Fantasy VII Remake on PlayStation 4, initially not to be upgradable to the PlayStation 5 version. Now you can upgrade it to the PS5 version, and the PS5 version is awesome, so that's great, and the game itself is great. You got Remnant from the Ashes, which is a great co-op title, and then you got Farpoint, one of the early PlayStation VR titles. It hasn't, you know, aged incredibly well, comparably speaking to all the other VR games at this point, but still, look at that roster of games for the month of March. Hard thumbs up there. Again, probably the best month of the year. April was a pretty good one as well as you got Oddworld Soulstorm, a brand new release. So whenever you get a brand new release in a game that dropped at, what, 50 bucks? Uh, that was PlayStation 5 only, so unfortunately you didn't get the PlayStation 4 version. So that was a month in particular that I think PlayStation 5 owners would have been a lot more happy. Days Gone was offered as well. Now, it's interesting because Days Gone was actually a part of the PlayStation 5 Instant Game Collection. So either way, if you're on PS4 or PS5, you're kind of getting screwed one way or the other. But um, I'd rather not get Days Gone and get Oddworld so old Storm. Well, you got Days Gone, but Days Gone was already available to you if you get the idea, but yeah, Days Gone, and then also Zombie Army 4 Dead War, which uh, isn't a game I think people got super excited about, but was still a nice addition to the library. Again, well, I wouldn't say it was as good as March or February, I would still say April was a thumbs up, um, maybe closer to thumbs in the middle than the other months, but still a thumbs up. May, you had Wreckfest, which was a brand new release on PlayStation 5. It was available on PlayStation 4 as well, but you got the PlayStation 5 version here. Battlefield 5, and then Stranded Deep. I remember talking about the May PlayStation Plus games, and a lot of people were a bit disappointed with the offering of Battlefield 5. Battlefield 5 obviously had a bit of a controversial launch, to say the least. Uh, Stranded Deep was a survival title, which I could understand why it wouldn't be up the alley of many people, but uh, yeah, that was an offering. And then also Wreckfest. Wreckfest, I think, was a pretty good offering. I would say that's a thumbs in the middle looking back at it. So yeah, probably the weakest month up until that point. Then you went on to June. You got Operation Tango, which was a co-op title. You got Star Wars, uh, Star Wars Squadrons, which was a nice offering. That was a game that came out back in late 2020. So following up eight months later being a plus game, that was a nice offering. And then Virtual Fighter 5 Ultimate Showdown. That was a brand new release that kind of came out of nowhere. So to get that as well, I thought that was a pretty good one. I would say uh, June 2021, 
Hmm, that's one that I would say thumbs in the middle but tilting upwards just because I don't think you had that premiere game to get really excited about. I don't think Operation Tango was that. But Star Wars Squadrons and Virtual Fighter 5 Ultimate Showdown were very nice offerings. So if you want to go thumbs up on that, I could see that. But I would say thumbs in the middle, tilting upwards if that makes sense. All right, July, you got a Plague Tale Innocence on PS5. That was the PS5 copy only. So if you're on PS4, you're out of luck on that one. Call of Duty Black. Black Ops 4, and then WWE 2K Battlegrounds. 2K Battlegrounds kind of a wash there, but Black Ops 4, that's kind of notable, but I remember back in July, people with Black Ops 4 had the same issue that they had with Battlefield 5. It just seems like people didn't want a multiplayer first-person shooter. But even then, that was a nice offering, and uh, that was the Call of Duty game that was online only, so that's something to note as well. And A Plague Tale Innocence, I think that alone makes the month really good, but in the case in the case of Plague Tale Innocence, it was only on PS5, so if you were one of those people that were just on PS4, I could definitely understand why you would be disappointed with July's offering. So with July, thumbs in the middle on that one. Moving on to August. You got Hunter's Arena Legends that was on PS5 and PS4. I remember talking about this back in August and I said that it was a Battle Royale title and people got really upset right off the bat, but it was a little bit of a different Battle Royale title. It had a lot of different game modes as well that made it more reminiscent of like an action fighting game. So interesting offering there. Plants vs. Zombies Battle for Neighborville and then Tennis World Tour 2. Um, honestly, August is probably the month that you got to say is a thumbs down. I even remember going back to August people when I talked about it were uh, pretty disappointed with August's offering, so I'll give that a thumbs down. Um, yeah, just uh, not not a fantastic month, especially comparably speaking to some of the other months in earlier of the year. September, you got Overcooked All You Can Eat, which was actually a brand new release that was available on PlayStation 5 only. So that was a pretty nice offering. Overcooked is always a pretty good time if you just want something that to not take too seriously. Overcooked's a good time. Hitman 2, that's a pretty good offering. Uh, Hitman 2 was pretty darn good. The Hitman games in, in that in this entire trilogy have been pretty darn good, and uh, Hitman 2 was solid. Predator Hunting Grounds as well. That wasn't that wasn't a game that really clicked with me. It was a multiplayer oriented experience, but. Um, yeah, I would say that's a thumbs in the middle in my eyes. October, you got Hell Let Loose, Mortal Kombat X, and PGA Tour 2K21. Hell Let Loose was PS5 only. Mortal Kombat X and PGA Tour 2K21. Like, Mortal Kombat X was definitely a good game, but a little bit dated at that stage of the game. PGA Tour 2K21... Um, I think some golf-related stuff was going around at the time, so maybe it was a timely addition to PlayStation Plus, but nevertheless, Hell Let Loose was definitely the standout with that being PS5 only. Unfortunately, I would say October was a thumbs down. November. Okay, I don't even have to get into this. Let's just start off about thumbs up on this one. First Class Trouble, PS5 and PS4. That was a brand new release. Knockout City, PS5 and PS4. That was a multiplayer game done by EA. Um, unfortunately, didn't really sustain its community, so it was really good that they did offer it on Plus. They have a free trial available as well, so hopefully that game is still kicking. But the biggest offering was definitely Kingdoms of Amalur Re-Reckoning. Re that was on PS4, and uh, Kingdoms of Amalur I think is fantastic. Open world action RPG, pretty engaging battle system. Not a fantastic story, but pretty enjoyable open world RPG there. On top of that, celebrating VR's fifth anniversary, you got three PlayStation VR titles. The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, which is fantastic, one of the best VR titles, until you fall, and then you also got the Persistence, and the Persistence was actually a game that you could play with regular control, so that was kind of just like an additional fourth game. So November, easy thumbs up, and then lastly, December, First up, you had Godfall Challenger Edition. Remember, this was the Challenger Edition, so you didn't get the entire Godfall experience. What this was, was you get to the end of the game and you essentially got to do all the post-game content. If you wanted to go through the single-player story campaign, you would have to buy that separately. It was a $15 release, so a little bit of a bummer there. Mortal Shell, which I know that a lot of people were super happy about. Souls-like game there. And then lastly, LEGO DC Super Villains, which it's a LEGO game. It's always pretty easy to get into and have a good time with a LEGO game game. I mean, it's not something to take too, too seriously, but anybody can jump in and play one of those. Uh, that's a thumbs in the middle for me. Probably if that was the full Godfall game, I would say it's a thumbs up, but with it being the Challenger Edition, uh, Mortal Shells was seemingly the game that people were really captured by and were excited for, but just one out of the three. Um, LEGO DC Super Villains for what it is is a fine offering, but Godfall being just the Challenger Edition, I'd say that was thumbs in the middle. So that's going to do it for me. Overall, I think we started off 2021 just us with a gangbuster offering uh, for month after month. January, February, March, April, 
uh, were all very, very good. Then things got a little bit tapered off into May, June, July, August, and then you start to pick back up towards the end of the year. November was definitely really good. October was decent. September was decent, but, uh, Looking at, into 2022, January, if the leak is to be believed, and Deal Labs has been on point, looks like we're kicking off 2022 in a big way as well. So hopefully that can persist through the rest of the year, and it'll be interesting to see the evolution of PlayStation Plus with all the rumblings about Sportacus, Sony introducing their own subscription service, so that's going to be something interesting to monitor as well. But that's going to do it for me. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Let me know your thoughts on PlayStation Plus in the year 2021. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.